All right, welcome to our latest hoops cast. We know there'll be at least one more, Kevin, because Florida with the win over Virginia today, the most unlikely. I don't know what, what's more unlikely, who the hero of the game was or who Florida's playing in the next round. <laughs> That's a good one, really. I mean, you could start with Casey Prather and go with Norfolk State. I mean, it was just an unbelievable afternoon of uh, basketball for us to watch. Uh, to some of the surprising, but that's what March Madness is all about, right, Pat, it's, isn't it? Yeah, you know, usually, though, it, when you have something like that, and I wrote this in my column, it's a guy from an obscure conference, but he's a good player, but, and you just haven't heard of him. People in Gainesville hadn't even heard of Casey <laughs> Prather. I mean, he had played, I figured it out, he'd played about four minutes a game if you didn't count the non-conference stuff. Yeah. And uh, obviously, we saw the monster dunk against Kentucky, but that was about all he did. Today, I mean, it was amazing. 14 points, four rebounds defended Mike Scott, the, uh, the combination of things they threw at him. Really, he was not a factor at all in the game. And, uh, and I will say this, Virginia's not very good, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's important to note, to see them and to hear about all their defense and stuff, and Florida was able to drive down the lane all day. It was unbelievable, yeah, and I think offensively too, Virginia particularly, you know, they went through some bad drafts. Kind of reminded me of that FSU Alabama team that, you know, those teams that can't score that Florida right. has traditionally fared well against because they have enough, uh, you know, firepower to shoot. But, but I thought the key was, you know, four for 23, that was their worst day of the season from three point range, and they still won by 26, which tells you, granted, against an offensively challenged team, but this is a team that, you know, can win that other way if they have to. And, and uh, you know, 44-24 in the paint was encouraging. You know, uh, the big key in the first half was getting those, uh, you know, 10-second chance points. That's what got Prather going, uh, right. two putbacks, Beal, Young. Uh, their ability to crash the glass, 39-23, I think those were some of the big keys to the game. Pretty amazing. Florida only made four three-pointers in a game. Wilbekin had one and uh -huh. Prather had one. Uh, you know, uh, if you had told me that, I would have said, well, they must have got those in trash time and Virginia must have blown them <laughs> out. But uh, Florida was a very good win. I mean, a very solid win. Now they will face Norfolk State, believe it or not. Uh, that game was as cool an atmosphere as I've seen. I've been covering these things a long time. But you had a huge crowd of Missouri fans and then a huge crowd of Kansas fans rooting against Missouri yeah. because they're leaving the conference. It was like a completely neutral game. Oh, yeah, and uh, obviously uh – you know, the physicality of Norfolk State, their inside presence, you know, getting the putback at the end of the game uh, was the key of the game. O'Quinn, I mean, he was just phenomenal. O'Quinn is, uh, I had heard a lot about him coming into this game. I really hadn't seen him play, but he was a beast. He uh, had 26 points, 14 boards. But the other thing is, this is, that was like the worst matchup Missouri could have gotten. You know, we always talk about matchups. And you say, why, why is that? Norfolk State, hmm. they're 15th seed. Missouri is a four guards and a forward team. This team was long. This team was like almost, not quite Kentucky long, but that's what it reminded me of in that their length at every position really gave Missouri some trouble. Yeah, and at the end of the game, you know, prime example, you know, Ricardo Ratliff, the kid from CFCC, the kid from Ocala, can't get the rebound on the missed free throw. That turned out to be really a, a, a killer. They get two more trips to the line, and then obviously miss the three-point play at the uh, three-pointer at the buzzer to lose the game. Yeah, so we'll see what happens on Sunday. Obviously, Florida with a, a real opportunity to move on to Phoenix, but uh, anybody out there who thinks this is going to be easy, you're out of your mind. This is a good basketball team. Probably was underseeded, uh, but again, that's what happens to this team from the MEAC. This yep. is also a team that beat Bethune by three in the conference championship game. <laughs> you know, and Rodney McCauley, one of their guards, is telling me, you know, with the number of transfers they have, and they say they feel like they can match up with any team in the country because of that physicality right. and because of that front line, you know, their ability to They're very to experienced. Yep. Think, a bunch of seniors. A bunch of seniors, yeah. Fourth-year juniors who've transferred in from other schools. So it's going to be a battle for the Gators, and they're going to have to – they're not going to win going four for 23 in this game. I'll yeah. just put it to you that way. Yeah, they're going to definitely have to, you know, mix it up a little bit uh, with the perimeter game and, and the inside game. But uh, – a real chance, you know, to go back yep. to the Sweet 16 for the second straight year. That'd be big for this program. You know, Kenny Boynton, again, had shooting problems, but he took it to the lane. That was the thing that he was able to do. Walker had some inside. Uh, Beal certainly played big again, and Patrick Young played well. Uh, and, you know, so, you know, Florida wasn't – I, I don't think it was the shooting background because we turn around and watch a game yep. where, where Missouri is 13-29. Exactly. You know, from three-point range. So I don't think it's – it is kind of a spacious. It goes way back. But I just think – I mean, they had a lot of lip outs. But we thought that there were some jitters early. You know, he mentioned yeah. that. Um, but, you know, this is an experienced Florida team from that standpoint. But, uh, you know, they, they really they did the other thing. You know, I thought the press was effective today, too. They were able to turn Virginia over a little bit. I think that helped with the tempo in the second half and really kind of wore Virginia down. I think yeah, in the, last, they got the last 15 minutes, you know, their lack of depth and, and Billy subbed pretty well. And, 
you know, Wilbekin hit a three off the bench. Uh, you know, Mike Rosario had that air ball. But, you know, at least Billy used his bench and was able to get other people involved. And obviously, pray they're having the huge day. Well, that's what everybody said. They, in fact, somebody told me this game's not going to be in the 70s. Well, it was for one team. Yeah. But uh, they also said they only had six and a half players, and, and that could hurt. By the so. way, for as offensively challenged as Virginia is, and, and Billy didn't think it was a, a tremendous defensive uh, performance, but still lowest points that Florida's ever allowed in an NCAA tournament game, 45 points. So uh, yeah. hats off that, you know, at least, uh, you know, they came out and, and showed good effort on the defensive end to have that kind of performance. Well, we'll be back with you Sunday. We'll see if Florida's going to Phoenix or going home. Well, either way, they'll go home, but then they could go back to Phoenix. <laughs> and we'll find out if we're going to back to Phoenix. Well, never mind. You know what I'm saying. We'll be back with you uh, Sunday to give you what happens in the Florida-Norfolk State game. You know, that's, that's usually a December game or something like that, you know. Florida's playing Norfolk State. And uh, well, you know who's from 8, that area. Is, people in there. You know who's from that area. It's Vernon Macklin. They could call him for a scouting right, report, right? You, you know, go. he knows some people there. All right, we'll be back then. Until then, Pat Dooley of the Gainesville Sun, Kevin Brockway of the Gainesville Sun, saying so long from Omaha, Nebraska.